Hello everyone, welcome back. This is the 10th lecture on the topic impact of jet on curved veins. In this lecture, we will continue our discussion on the impact of jet on radial flow wheels. Accordingly, at the end of this lecture, you will be able to calculate the efficiency of a jet impinging on the radial flow wheel. And in this lecture, we will concentrate uh, mainly on the expression for the efficiency and what is the condition for which the efficiency will be maximum. Before that, let us quickly glance through what we have discussed in the previous lecture. When we have a tangential jet impinging on a series of curved wings mounted on a wheel radially, the case becomes that of a radial flow wheel and rather than the imp impulsive force exerted by the jet on the wheel, we talk about the rotational tendency uh, produced by the flowing water or flowing fluid and hence the power developed. So, in this case, the torque generator is given by W by G which is the mass flow rate multiplied by Vw R plus Vw1 R1 where R and R1 are the radii of the wheel at the inlet and out the outlet respectively and Vw and Vw1 are the velocity of flow that is the tangential component of velocity at the inlet and the outlet respectively. And for this case the power delivered by the fluid to the wheel is given by the torque multiplied by the angular velocity that is converted to the form W by G into Vw u plus or minus Vw1 u1 and we use that plus sign when the jet angle at the outlet is less than 90 degree and we use a negative sign when the jet angle is more than 90 degrees. And this mass flow rate W by G can also be expressed as rho A V. Therefore, the power expression can also be written as rho A V into Vw u plus or minus Vw1 u1. Another expression for this power which will be very handy for us when we deal with practical problems or numerical examples is what is the power developed per unit weight of the fluid flowing through the wheel. So, we know that W by G is the uh, mass of the fluid flowing or W is the weight of the fluid flowing per unit time. So, power developed per unit weight is given by dividing this expression with W. So, it is given by 1 by G into Vw u plus or minus Vw1 u1. When we know the power developed in this case, we may also be interested in the efficiency that means, how much percentage of the input energy that we have given is converted into the power or is converted into the mechanical energy in this case when we talk about the hydraulic turbines. So, efficiency is the output power developed divided by the input kinetic energy available to the fluid because in this case the jet is coming and impinging the wheel. So, the jet has kinetic energy at the inlet and this kinetic energy is used to uh, do the work and hence is converted into the power and hence the output power divided by input kinetic energy gives us the efficiency. And kinetic energy expression we have seen earlier as half rho a b cube where rho is the mass density of the fluid, A is the cross sectional area of the jet and V is the absolute velocity of the jet at the inlet. Therefore, the expression for efficiency is output power rho A V into V W u plus or minus V W 1 u 1 divided by the input kinetic energy that is half rho A V q and by cancelling out the common terms this can be simplified into 2 times V W u plus or minus V W 1 u 1 divided by V square. This is a, the expression for efficiency in case if a jet is impinging on a radial flow vein and this will be uh, applied when we analyze the performance of hydraulic turbines. So, the expression is given by 2 times V w u plus or minus V w 1 u 1 divided by V square. As I mentioned quite often we will be talking about the power produced by unit weight of water. In that case, we need to consider the input kinetic energy also per unit weight. Energy per unit weight is the energy head. So, kinetic energy of the fluid per unit weight is the kinetic energy head which is V square by 2G. It is the kinetic energy head or it can be obtained by dividing the kinetic energy half rho A V cube with the weight of the fluid. 
weight is mass multiplied by acceleration due to gravity mass is mass density into the discharge that is mass density into area into velocity multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity gives the weight so if you divide the kinetic energy expression with the weight you will get the kinetic energy head which is v square by 2g we have also seen the power delivered per unit weight that is 1 by g into v w u plus or minus v w 1 u 1 so if we divide this output power per unit weight divided uh, by the input kinetic energy per unit weight that is v square by 2g again the expression for efficiency we will get in the form 2 times v w u plus or minus v w 1 u 1 divided by v square this expression for efficiency can be simplified further by using the work energy principle which states the work done is equal to the change in kinetic energy that has taken place for the fluid. Work done we have uh, seen just now that is work done by the fluid per unit time is given by rho A V into V W U plus or minus V W 1 U 1. Change in kinetic energy is the difference in the kinetic energy of the fluid at the inlet and the outlet respectively. The kinetic energy at the inlet is given by half rho a v cube where v is the absolute velocity of the jet at the inlet as it flows through the vein because of the friction some losses take place here and it comes out with a different absolute velocity v1 and this v1 is defined by what is the relative velocity of the outlet and what is the velocity of the vein at the outlet and hence V1 is the absolute velocity which is the resultant of Vr1 and U1. So definitely V1 will be different from V which is the absolute velocity of the outlet. But what is the mass that is coming out at the outlet? Whatever mass which has entered the vein the same mass will come out at the outlet. So whatever mass entering that is rho a v is the same mass which is coming out at the outlet which means that the kinetic energy which is half m v square kinetic energy can be written as half m v square kinetic energy is equal to half m v square at the inlet mass is equal to rho a v and at the outlet also the mass is rho a v itself but the velocity with which the water is entering at the inlet is v and velocity with which water is leaving the vein at the outlet is v1 therefore the kinetic energy at the inlet is given by half rho a v into v square and the kinetic energy at the outlet is given by half rho a v into v1 square therefore the change in kinetic energy can be written as half rho a v into v square minus v1 square now that we have the expression for the work done per unit time and changing kinetic energy that is equation 1 and 2 equating these two and cancelling the common term that is rho a v we will get v w u plus or minus v w 1 u 1 is equal to half into v square minus v1 square this can be substituted in the efficiency expression here we have vw u plus or minus vw1 u1 and this can be substituted with half into v square minus v1 square and if you substitute and simplify this the expression for efficiency becomes eta is equal to 1 minus v1 square divided by v square where v1 is the absolute velocity of the jet at the outlet v is the absolute velocity of the jet at the inlet which has uh, become a very simplified form. With these expressions for velocity, let us now see the condition for which the efficiency can be attained a maximum value. So, from this expression, from this expression, that is eta is equal to 1 minus v1 square by v square, the maximum value of efficiency that can be attained is 1, and when we will get the value 1 when v1 is reduced to 0 that means the absolute velocity of the jet at the outlet is reduced to 0 that means the water is not coming out of the way which is practically not possible then there is no flow taking place therefore that condition is not possible from this expression we cannot get the condition for maximum efficiency 
uh, I repeat the, for, from this expression the maximum efficiency is possible when V1 is reduced to 0 that is absolute velocity of the jet at the outlet is 0. Absolute velocity of jet at the outlet is 0 means there is no flow taking place at the outlet that is water is not flowing out of the wheel which means there is no flow taking place. In that case again the work done will be reduced to 0 and hence that condition is not practical. What is the other condition which can increase or which can give us the maximum efficiency? Let us see this expression. In this expression this is uh, 2 times Vw u plus so minus Vw1 u1. So, when we have plus and minus which will give us maximum efficiency? The plus will give us maximum efficiency. So, we should have a positive sign here and Vw1 should also be maximum for that plus sign. What is it that we are talking about? This is the outlet velocity triangle that we are discussing and this Vw1 should be in the negative x direction that is when we use plus sign for that uh, Vw1 to be in the negative x direction beta should be less than 90 degree and Vw1 is the component of V1 along the tangential direction. Therefore, the maximum value that Vw1 can attain is equal to V1 itself. That means, V1 is along the tangential direction that is the condition for which the efficiency can be maximum. So, how do we draw when V1 is along the Vw1? Say we have Vr1, U1 will also be in the same direction uh, along the same line but in the opposite direction and V1 will also be along the same line which means that U1, V1 and Vr1 are collinear. In that case say beta is reduced to 0 it is definitely less than 90. So, Vw1 is towards the left and hence we can go for the positive sign and also V1 is tangential therefore, Vw1 attain its maximum value which is equal to V1. Therefore, the condition for maximum efficiency is when Vw1 is maximum and it is the negative extraction that means, U1, V1 and Vr1 are collinear beta is less than 90 degree for positive sign, u1, v1 and vr1 are collinear for the maximum value of uh, vw1 and this also gives rise to the condition that outlet vein angle phi, when these three are collinear, the outlet vein angle phi should be 0, but practically it should be close to 0, uh, not exactly 0, it is maintained as close to 0 as possible. That is the shape of the veins are maintained close to semicircular shape as much as possible. Now, let us see how it is done in the case of Francis turbine. So, this is the Francis turbine with a runner consisting of series of curved veins mounted on a wheel. So, when uh, water enters the vein tangentially and if it leaves the vein tangentially, it leaves the vein without any shock. And the shape of the vein is maintained in such a way that the relative velocity of the outlet Vr1 is as close to the tangent as possible or phi is as close to 0 as possible. Sometimes 0 to 15 degrees is maintained as the outlet vein angle. So, when Vr1 is as close to a tangent as possible with a very small value of phi, we will get the absolute velocity of the jet at the outlet. But in this case you can see there will be a component that is velocity of whirl at the outlet and if all these veins produce the velocity of whirl at the outlet that creates an operational difficulty for the runner. Therefore, the speed of the veins or the speed of the wheel is adjusted in such a way that or in other words the u1 is adjusted in such a way that this velocity of whirl at the outlet can be eliminated. There are no whirls at the outlet. The water leaves the vein without any shock or any whirl at the outlet. So, the speed is adjusted or U1 is adjusted in such a way that the flow is radial at the outlet so that without creating any disturbance, this water can be collected and discharged. That is uh, for Francis turbine, for the practical applications, most of the times the velocity is maintained radial at the outlet. That means it comes like this, the water enters the vein 
you can see the relative velocity water enters the vein without any shock that is it enters the vein tangentially it, the, it leaves the vein tangentially that is VR1 is tangential to the vein but we maintain a very small angle vein angle at the outlet and also the speed is adjusted in such a way that the velocity absolute velocity is radial at the outlet that is how we can say that the water leaves the vein without any shock or burn at the outlet. Now let us consider the case of Pelton wheel. In Pelton wheel also we want to have a tangential jet so that there is no shock at the inlet and the vein should be moving there are a series of curved veins they should be moving and uh, we want to maximize the efficiency. So let us say that efficiency is maximum when the shape of the vein is semicircular. When the shape is semicircular, the water comes and hit the vein at its inlet and it is tangential, it moves through the vein and it comes back in the same direction and hits the same jet and it creates practical difficulties in this case. So we do not want a perfect semicircle here. Instead what we want is we will slightly change the shape and we will maintain the shape close to semicircle. Enters here and close to semicircle is maintained, not exactly semicircle. Uh, the angle is reduced so that efficiency can be uh, maximized. So in this case water enters the vein tangentially at the inlet, goes through the vein and comes out at a small angle with respect to the x direction. But problem in this case is when this is the case it the jet will exert so in this case we know that this is the direct uh, velocity of the jet and it comes out with the velocity v1 and the vein is moving in this direction with the velocity u. So in this case the jet exerts a force along the x direction that is fx and also there will be a force along the y direction fy there is a force in the radial direction. This force along the radial direction create pressure on the wheel which has to be eliminated. How that can be eliminated? What is practically done is you insert one more vein here which is identical to the vein above. Now the water which is entering the vein at this splitter gets split into two, one goes tangentially but enters tangentially to the upper vein and comes out, the other one enters tangentially to the lower one and comes out. So in this case the force here also there will be a force one along the x direction component along the x direction, a component along the y direction. This Fy and this Fy will be equal in magnitude because the jet gets split into two equal components, veins are of identical shape. So this Fy and this Fy will get cancelled since they are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. So the resultant will be a net force along the x direction. That is what is done in the case of a Pelton wheel. So the shape of the cup is a double cup what enters water enters the split uh, here at the splitter gets divided into two. So this is how the runner of a Pelton wheel looks like double ellipsoidal shape cups with a hole here so that the water uh, impinging on one vein will not uh, get disturbed by the other veins. And uh, for each of this vein water enters at the splitter and moves tangentially so that the uh, radial force can be eliminated and we can attain maximum efficiency. Thus to summarize our discussion when a jet of water enters a series of curved way mounted on a wheel the torque exerted is given by W by G into VWR plus or minus VW1 R1. And the corresponding power developed or work done per unit time is given by torque multiplied by the angular velocity or power developed per unit weight of the fluid is given by 1 by G into VWU plus or minus VW1U1. And we have also seen the expression for efficiency which is given by 2 times VWU plus or minus VW1U1 divided by V square or it can be written in a simplified form 1 minus V1 square divided by V square. We will continue this discussion in the next lecture. Thank you.